Hello, this is Bebo Bevan with Oil & Gas 360. Uh, we're at the Intercom Oil & Services Conference in San Francisco. And uh, today we have the pleasure of talking with Rick McCullough, Executive Chairman of Nighthawk Energy. Rick, welcome aboard. We're Thank glad you, to Bebo. have you Thank share you. some thoughts with us. Glad um, to be here. Good. We'll probably, um, I'll just dig in and we'll kind of find out what's going on at Nighthawk. Great. Okay. So, uh, Rick, you got to tell me how did a London-listed company find its way to Colorado? <laughs> Well, it's an interesting story, and um, as you know, Bebo, I've just been there for about four months, so I'm relatively new to the company. But the company uh, has always been listed on the AIM market in the UK. Uh, they began as a non-operated owner of properties, uh, and the best property that they really liked was in the Eastern DJ, about 85 miles south of Denver. So in 2012, they decided to buy out the operator uh, and put together an operating, operating team. Uh, Chuck Wilson, our chief operating officer, was the first operator uh, hired, and he put together uh, a small, very capable technical team. And they began drilling uh, in mid-2012. Um, they made a very interesting discovery um, in what they call the Arikari Creek Field. Um, it's a, it's consists of a subterranean high structure, and when they shot uh, 3D on this structure, they realized that because of the tilt of the structure and this fault system, um, that they had a thesis that oil had migrated into that structure and was caught by the tr by the fault system. Um, and sure enough, they they proved that up. Um, in 2012, they, uh, over the next two years, uh, drilled another uh, 13 wells uh, successfully, had an 87% success rate in this new field uh, with the use of 3D, and grew the company from like a standing start of 30 barrels a day to over 2,000 barrels a day of production today. Well, that's fantastic. Yep. Well, you're, um, you're lucky to be in um, kind of leading the charge now at this uh <laughs> What used to be fledgling is now moving forward fast. Right. Um, can you uh, give the audience a little background on the management team? Sure. Well, my background is uh, probably 35 years uh, of energy, working in different sectors. Um, most recently, I served as chairman and CEO of PDC Energy, uh, a NASDAQ company in Denver. Um, Chuck Wilson, as I mentioned, has probably uh, 30 years of experience uh, working primarily in drilling and operating positions uh, with some uh, good-sized companies. Uh, your audience may recognize uh, he worked at Forest Oil and was very instrumental there in driving down uh, drilling and completion costs. Uh, and he was working at Gasco when he decided to uh, pursue this. What's really kind of characteristic of our team is they probably have an average tenure of maybe 35 years experience in the industry so it's a very small very capable technical team and most of them have worked with Chuck in the past so it's kind of like him pulling together his ex-colleagues uh, into this team um, we have uh, Mike Thompson uh, our VP of uh, uh, geology has been with the company since day one um, We've got a geologist, um, Andy, who um, has worked all over the world and probably worked most of the major basins in the United States. Um, we have uh, a, a fellow that probably has like 50 years of experience that actually started up a downhole tool company um, that became Weatherford Tools. And so wow. it's, a, it's a pretty elite small group. And that's one of the things that really attracted me to the company was obviously They've had great success in the drilling. They have a great asset, but more importantly, they have just a super strong technical team, and the guys all enjoy working together. Well, that's fantastic. It sounds like a, a group put together in heaven ready to it go. It does. <laughs> um, I've got to ask you, the, your website says, we struck oil in an area that hadn't been drilled for 25 years. How'd that happen? Well, as I mentioned, uh, so they bought out the uh, operator's position right. and 
So we have two very large acreage uh, blocks um, that's kind of bisected by the small town of Lyman in Lincoln County. Right. So we have about uh, 80 to 100,000 acres north of Lyman and another 100, 120,000 acres south of Lyman. Um, when they started looking at the, the 2D uh, shoots that were available, they saw this structure. And so, like I said, they, they developed um, this thesis. Um, so they put uh, some capital together uh, and began um, drilling and had uh, great success. The reason why we say it's a discovery is because this zone had never been um, produced and never had oil of any significance found in it in the state of Colorado. Okay. Um, and so they they drill at about we drill at about eight thousand feet into something called the Spurgeon, mm -hmm. uh, and then what's really most interesting about our opportunities is now we have found oil in upper zones, and so uh, we see a St. Louis zone uh, on the structure that we think could work horizontally. Mm -hmm. And we're also drilling vertically in a Pennsylvania age rock called the Marmoton, which has historically been successful in that part of the country. Um, we think we have, you know, multiple pay zones. Sure. Um, and we've drilled to date now three um, very successful Marmoton wells. And so, what the future looks like, we probably have. We, like I said, we've drilled 13 wells on a Rickery Creek. We probably see as many as 50 more locations there. We've got another field to the south of us uh, called Snow King. We see another maybe 60 locations there. We've begun drilling there with success. And more interestingly, we just put a JV together, two JVs that are very strategic. And so now we control um, this high structure for probably about 25 miles. And so it sets up for maybe as many as four or five or six more fields. Um, and it all came out of that, those initial evaluations by the geologist of this high structure in the faulting system. Oh, that's fantastic. So you, you're set up for a number of years to keep this thing rolling. We believe so. Yeah, great. Um, <clears throat> Rick, um, Nighthawk has generated some impressive well economics in the Rickery field, Creek field. Uh, can you talk about the break-even costs there and lay out some of the other economics? Sure. So that's one of the things that attracted me to the company is I was reading about their um, very high initial production rates and I was reading that they were doing this with vertical drilling. Um, so after I joined the company, we actually did a look back just to see how successful the company had actually been. So first of all, um, understand that we drill using vertical techniques, very simple completions, probably at a well cost today in the million seven, million eight range. Um, but the IP rates uh, for these wells can be 300 barrels a day. And the EURs, the ultimate recoveries, can maybe be as much as two, 250,000 barrels. So the, the rates of return are extremely high. Um, the other characteristic of the well is that it comes online and doesn't decline much in the first year. And so that flush production that you get in the first year also drives high economics. So I went back and looked at just how successful perhaps these wells have been. Um, and I found that the 13 producers in a Rickery Creek have already yielded a million barrels of production in just two years. Then I looked at oh, how much cash flow that was. That was about $50 million worth of cash flow to date on a $26 million investment. Now we've got all this, all this oil developed and producing. If you assume that oil prices average $50, which current levels, which is I think very conservative for the next 15 years, we'll recover another $50 million worth of capital. If you assume they return to the $75 level, it's probably more like $80 million. So from a financial point of view, my, my background what that tells me is that the team has invested 26 million and yielded a four to five times return on capital in just two years. Wow. It's, it's, uh, in this price environment, this is exactly the kind of thing that you need people need to focus on. Right. Yeah. Well, that's great. Um, 
You know, the uh, rig laydowns from the pri falling prices have dominated the news, of course, sure. in the industry. Um, but taking a general view of commodities and price cycles and all, what do you see, uh, you know, at what price do you see E&P investment picking up, say, in the shale plays and that sort of thing? Well, first of all, my I went through the price collapse in 2008 uh, at PDC, and so... Uh, I feel like I've been there before, and uh, just like others that have been through that, um, we're making a 35% a cut in our capital. You know, we can actually drill and, and drive value at prices as low as maybe 40 or $50. But it just doesn't seem like it's an environment where you want to bring that new oil to market. And so what we're doing is actually drilling these uphold uh, behind pipe opportunities that have very low capital cost, and so we think we can maintain and maybe even grow production a little bit with that, and then we'll start drilling in the second half of the year. Um, you know, we have we have assumed uh, second half of the year pricing in the sixty dollar range. That seems like that's kind of a, a range that I think others um, will respond to. You know, when you look at based in economics across the country, um, there's really only two that that some of the analysts project will, you will not see production fall off, and one is the DJ Basin where we are, right. and the other is the Permian. Both of those basins are characterized by multiple pay zones like we have, which improves the economics. And then... Um, you also got uh, better economics. So I think what you'll see is the basins that have that, that have the higher break-even costs. You know, they will the operators will shut down those locations and those drilling sites first, delay some of the others. But I expect that you'll see the the bend in the in the growth curve begin to take place in the second half of the year, and that's why we're delaying our drilling. That makes sense. Well, thank you so much, Rick. I appreciate your oh, my uh, pleasure. coming in and talking with us. Happy to. Thank you. It's, we've been talking to Rick McCullough, uh, Executive Chairman, Nighthawk Energy, Oil and Gas 360.